لما يا مخلوق آثرت الجحود كنت معدوما فمن أين الوجود آهي الصدفة أم رب الودود آهي الصدفة أم رب الودود قبله في الكون من بعده السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وعليه وأصحابه أجمعين <تصفيق> Welcome again to another one of our Daros and our sessions in which we discuss verses of the Holy Quran. And we are actually discussing Tafsir of Surah Dukhan, the Tafsir of the Quran, English commentary of the Holy Quran, so that we can understand the Book of Allah better. And uh, the last verse that we uh, stopped and uh, we dealt with in Surah Dukhan was verse 20. And from today we continue to verse 21. And in verse 21, uh, it is mentioned, the verse of the Qur'an, it, is sta it states, But if you believe me not, then keep away from me and leave me alone. But if you believe me not, then keep away from me and leave me alone. Now this uh, verse here is connected to the verses before. And the discussion that is taking place here is between Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Prophet Moses, and Fir'aun, Pharaoh. And it mentions about how uh, Musa salam, was sent to, to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was the Pharaoh. He, Pharaoh itself is a title for the, uh, the emperor of Egypt in those days, the leader, the ruler, the king of Egypt. He used to be called the Pharaoh. And when Musa salam, came to him, sent by Allah, he said, going straight back to verse 18, he said to, them, he said to Pharaoh, restore me the slaves of Allah. As we mentioned before, Pharaoh had actually enslaved the Bani Israel. The Bani Israel literally means the children of Israel. The children of Israel. Who was Israel? Israel was really Yaqub salam, Prophet Jacob. And Prophet Jacob, his progeny, it's called Bani Israel. So it's Bani Yaqub or Banu Yaqub. Israel means Abdullah in their language. Israel means Abdullah, the servant of Allah. And this was the title given to Yaqub alayhi salam, Israel. So he, his children, Bani Israel, the children of Israel means the children of Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, Pharaoh, the mighty king of Egypt, from the Copt, the Copts or the Coptic people, the Coptic people were the original people of Egypt. And they followed the ancient religions of the Pharaohs in the past. And they had enslaved the Bani Israel. They had enslaved the children of Israel. And the children of Israel were people who throughout the ages, prophets came from among them and they always believed in prophets and they always believed in the oneness of Allah. When uh, Fir'aun enslaved them, he got them to do the most difficult work and they were beaten and they were persecuted. And when Musa salam, was made a prophet by Allah, Allah ordered Musa salam, to go to Fir'aun and preach the message of Tawheed, to preach to him what is the true religion of Allah, to believe in one God and to accept him, Musa, as a prophet, and also to release the children of Israel, the Bani Israel, from bondage. And that is exactly what Musa salam, came to him to tell him. So he told him, restore to me the slaves of Allah. And Allah referred to them as what? Ibadi, mind slaves and mind servants because they believed in Allah. They were persecuted for a long period of time. They were made to live in the bondage of Fir'aun. They were actually enslaved and made slaves by Fir'aun and they suffered a lot. So one is that Musa salam, told him that to restore to me the people, the children of Israel, the Bani Israel, and uh, he said, I am a messenger of Allah to you. Allah has sent me as a messenger and I'm trustworthy. You need to believe me. And then he said to Fir'aun, because he knew Fir'aun, as I said before in our past uh, discussions and discourses, uh, Musa wasalam, actually grew up in the royal palace of Fir'aun. So he, he knew Fir'aun and Fir'aun knew him also. So he told Fir'aun, do not exalt yourself. Do not big up yourself and do not behave as if you are the mighty creator and you are the sovereign power of the heavens and earth. Do not exalt yourself against Allah. Do not play big in front of Allah 
and I have come to you, said, I have come to you with a manifest authority. I have come to you with evidences and clear signs and miracles to prove that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. He is the creator and he has sent me. And then when uh, Fir'aun wanted to cause harm to him and stone him and they plotted to kill Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam made dua to Allah and he said, I seek refuge in my Lord and your Lord, lest you should stone me or kill me. Then it continues with the ayah that he says, but if you believe in me not, if you do not believe in me, then keep away from me and leave me alone. In other words, Musa alayhi salam made it clear to Fir'aun, if you have chosen not to believe in me, I have come to you from Allah. This is what Prophet Moses, Musa alayhi salatu was saying to him. I have come to you from Allah. And Allah has ordered me to tell you to release the children of Israel because he took them and made them slaves when they were never, they were slaves. And he continued to persecute them and he called himself the Lord while Allah is the Lord. So Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Moses placed the message before him. And when he threatened to kill him, Prophet Moses, Musa alayhi salam, said to him, If you do not believe in me, I have presented my message. But just in case you do not believe in me, then do not go about making that plot to kill me. Just leave me alone. Leave me and my message alone. You go about your business and let me go about my business. That, is what, that was the message. Because if, if it is that you do not want to believe in me, I cannot force you to believe in me. But similarly, if you do not believe in me, you must not force me to stop what I'm doing. I just say, just as I cannot force you to believe in me, you cannot force me to follow your way. And that was the gist of it. And it was as if he was saying, as for the matter, if you disbelieve in me, well, let us place the matter in the hands of Allah. And Allah will decide who is right and who is wrong and who should be, gain victory and who should suffer defeat. Let Allah decide that. So as it is mentioned under the commentary of this verse, here Musa salam advised Pharaoh by saying that if he does not believe in him, then he should leave him alone to deliver his message and refrain from causing harm to him. He told Pharaoh that he should not block his way and his preaching, but should entrust the matter between them to Allah, who will decide the case. So in, in other words, if he does not want to believe in him, then do not, do not become an obstacle in his path. Leave him alone. Let him carry on. So Musa will not interfere with him, and he, Fir'aun, should equally not interfere with Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. In this way, Musa alayhi salam continued to preach. He continued to preach. He placed the message before uh, Fir'aun, but he continued to preach to the people and establish the evidences of Allah and the truth to the people. So whatever evidences there were, there were, there were for Allah, he continued to prove that. And along with that, he continued to prove the truth to the people. He invited to the way of Allah and showed many miracles to them. Whatever miracles, miracles upon miracles were performed by Prophet Musa wasalam. Yet, Pharaoh and his people responded with nothing except enmity and disbelief. That was all they had shown to Musa wasalam. Enmity, animosity, threats to kill them and threats to murder them and all these different threats one after the other and all the while they continued to remain disbelieving in Allah. It continued and said, Pharaoh, it continues and says, Pharaoh increased his harshness to the Bani Israel and persecuted them mercilessly. See, when Musa salam came, the Bani Israel and the children of Israel recognized Musa salam as, let's say, the savior of the day because he was their prophet at that time. And they aligned themselves with him and they believed in him and they started to follow him. Now, this angered Fir'aun because with this new, uh, let's say, development where, where Musa salam came as a prophet, and they, they recognized Musa, and they knew Musa was speaking the truth. And uh, they knew uh, uh, the Israelites, the Bani Israel, always, as I said, believed in prophets. So they started to believe in, in Musa and started to worship Allah. And they followed Musa wherever he went. And, and as I said, Pharaoh did not like this. So he, he put more pressure on them and he persecuted them even more and tortured them. 
Why? Because they were believing and they were following and they were listening to Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. So he increased his harshness to the Bani Israel, the children of Israel. Along with this, he continued to challenge Musa alayhi salatu wa salam and blocked him in every manner from delivering his message to the people. He challenged Musa one after the other. And Musa alayhi salam accepted the challenge and he always defeated Fir'aun and, and the sorcerers that Fir'aun had around, around him. And besides that, the purpose of the challenge which he posed to Musa salam, and always tried to compete with him was simply to block him from delivering the message of the truth. When the situation became unbearable to Musa salam and his followers, he supplicated to Allah for his help and said, so, oh, so he, Musa alayhi salam, called upon his Lord, saying, These are indeed the people who are mujrimoon, they are disbelievers, they are polytheists, they are sinners, they are criminals, etc. In other words, Musa alayhi salam continued to preach to Fir'aun, but Fir'aun responded with harshness and he responded with threats to Musa alayhi salam. And he increased his harshness and increased the punishment and persecution to the Bani Israel, the Israelites. When it became unbearable and Fir'aun had already crossed all limits, Musa salam supplicated to Allah. He prayed to Allah and he made dua to Allah and he said, O oh my Lord, these people, they are people who are mujrimoon, they are people who are criminals, they are people who are wicked. There are people who are disbelievers. Oh Allah, they do not want to believe in you. Oh Allah, fantaqim minhum. Take revenge, ya Allah, from them. Oh Allah, you deal with this issue. Oh Allah, we entrust everything in your hands. So in this supplication, as it is mentioned, Musa salam complained to Allah about Fir'aun and his people. Musa salam complained to Allah about Fir'aun and his people saying that they were sinners and disbelievers who denied him, that's denied Allah as creator and also refused to release the Bani Israel from slavery. So the two, uh, let's say, tasks that Musa salam came with, Fir'aun and his people openly rejected him in each. First, it was to believe in Allah as their creator that Fir'aun is no creator and Fir'aun is not no any lord. Pharaoh is not the king and he is not the ruler you know, of the universe and Pharaoh is not the god. So it was to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the real creator, Rabb, he is the lord, he is the governor and he is the one who deserves all worship. Pharaoh rejected this. He did not want to believe and so his people rejected that, the Coptic people. Secondly, Musa salam also told him that Allah has ordered him to release the Bani Israel and release the Israelites from bondage and let them go with him, go back to the promised land. Fir'aun was not ready to do that also. And it was not only that Fir'aun and his people did not believe in Musa, and it was not that they just didn't want the Israelites to go with Musa salam, out of the land of Egypt. That was not all. Along with this, they increased in their persecution and tortures and really tormented the Israelites. And they killed them and they murdered them and they tried in every manner to persecute Musa salam, also. So that is what became un, un, unbearing and, and it could not, they couldn't take it anymore. And this is why when Musa salam, saw the extent to which Fir'aun had reached, he prayed to Allah, he says, Ya Rabbi, O oh my Lord, these people are wicked. These people are actually, they are cruel, they are tyrants and oppressors. Oh Allah, oh Allah, you take care of this issue. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he responded to Musa salatu wasalam. Allah always responds to the du'a of the prophets. And Allah always responds to the du'as of the believers. Allah always responds to the du'as of the believers. Whenever believers supplicate to Allah and they raise their hands to Allah and beg from Allah, Allah always responds to them. And He also responds to the supplication of the oppressed people. 
when people are oppressed in any manner and they call out to Allah and they cry out to Allah and they beg Allah to help them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately responds to those who are oppressed. So when Musa alayhi salatu wa salam made this dua to Allah, Allah responded immediately. And what did he say to Musa alayhi salam? O Musa, depart, you with my slaves by night. You depart and carry my slaves by night. Pharaoh doesn't want to release them, but take them. And during the period of the night, travel and move and go towards the sea. Surely you will be pursued. In this very ayah, two things are mentioned. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding Musa to take the Israelites and travel by night. So he had to make a plan with them and speak to them and let every one of them know on which night they were leaving from the land of Egypt and they were going towards the Red Sea, the shore of the Red Sea. And the other thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa alayhi salam, that you will be pursued. In other words, Fir'aun will find out that you have left and he will come after you. So it will not be surprising when Musa salam actually sees Fir'aun and his massive army coming behind them. He would know already because Allah has informed him, had informed him that Fir'aun will come after him. But Allah gave him the assurance that Fir'aun will not be able to catch up with him. Subhanallah. And this is what Allah said, Depart you with my slaves by night, surely you will be pursued. So this came, as it is mentioned here, the commentary, this came as a response to the supplication of Musa alayhi salam. Yani this verse, Allah spoke to him as a response. It was a revelation sent to Musa alayhi salam in which Allah instructed him to take out the Bani Israel during the period of night from Egypt and travel with them towards the sea. Allah told him this, go with them, subhanallah. Allah also informed him, Musa alayhi salam, that they would be followed by Pharaoh and his army. However, this will be the cause of their destruction. This is the plan that Allah has made, that Pharaoh, you know, filled up with hunger and, you know, the, the, that to take revenge, you know, uh, he will go after Musa alayhi salam until he will even enter into the sea with Musa alayhi salam and there is where Allah will destroy him, subhanAllah. So based on the above instruction from Allah, Musa alayhi salam left with the Bani Israel one night and traveled towards the sea as ordered by Allah. When Pharaoh found out that Musa alayhi salam had departed with the Bani Israel, as I said, the Bani Israel means the children of Israel, Israel or the Israelites, he, Pharaoh, immediately prepared an army and went after them. He traveled swiftly, swiftly to stop them from departing. But Musa salam, had already reached the sea. At that time, Allah instructed Musa salam, to strike his, the sea with his staff, to hit, take his staff. He used to walk with a, a rod to hit the sea with it. And with this, that is when he struck the staff, he had the stick. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, hit the water strike it and he took the, the staff and he hit the water subhanallah and with this striking of the staff Allah caused the waters of the ocean to become still so with all the waves and all these things that the high waves that we see the surging of the waves that normally, normally take place all those things came to a halt and the sea became totally still and calm not only that what did Allah do Allah made several dry paths for them to cross the sea in order to reach the other side of the shore. Many paths were made. The water, which will normally meet, the waters normally meet each other, all the different paths, it stopped and it separated itself. And in the sea, while the sea, it's, it's the oceans are deep, where you go further and further, subhanAllah, what a miracle Allah caused to happen. The water just stopped and there, were not, there was not only one pathway or road, there were many roads caused, you know, and created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Musa alayhi salatu wa salam and his people could actually walk on the sand which is at the bottom of the sea and they will cross the entire sea to reach on the other side of the shore, subhanallah. The Holy Quran mentions about this in another verse and states, and indeed, 
we inspired Musa alayhi salatu was salam saying, travel by night with my servants and strike a dry path for them in the sea, fearing neither to be overtaken by Fir'aun nor being afraid of drowning in the sea. Two things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to them, travel, Allah is saying to Musa alayhi salam, or Musa travel by night with my servants and my slaves. Take them. Because Fir'aun will not give any permission for them to leave. So take them and move out from the land of Egypt. And strike a dry path. That is where he was ordered to take the, the staff and strike it and hit it in the water. So he was asked to strike it. And when he did that, then dry paths will open. Dry paths, I mean, where, where there is no water. Allah says, and have no fear about two things. Subhanallah. One is the fear of being overtaken and caught by Fir'aun. Allah says, don't fear that. Fir'aun will not catch you. Although you will see him coming with his troops, the massive army, but he will not catch up with you. And the other thing is while going through the pathways, remember the water that was meeting, the waters that were meeting each other, all, all the different paths, it came to abrupt stop. So while they were running through the pathways, on their right side and on their left side, there was the water. And the water was much higher than them. So there is the fear in the heart that suppose this water they comes back together, then what will happen? Will you be drowned? And they are actually going through the middle of the ocean. Subhanallah. So Allah said to them, to Musa alayhi salam, have no fear for that. You will not drown. Allahu Akbar. Allah gives that assurance to them that Fir'aun will not catch up with them and they will not be drowned in the, in the Red Sea. When the oceans were opened into pathways as it continues, Musa alayhi salam, along with the Bani Israel, the children of Israel, calmly crossed through the paths and eventually reached the other side of the seashore. So they continued to move through all different paths. And they moved and they moved and they moved and walking on the sand at the bottom of the water while on their right side, their left side, there was the huge volume, volume and mass of water, subhanAllah. So he easily, together with the people, Pharaoh saw this, Allahu Akbar. He saw that, oh, there are paths in the sea and he can really catch up with, 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 with Musa salam. So he saw this and he followed them. And so he and his army entered into the dry paths and pathways that were made in the sea. The pathways that Allah had created, they entered into that. When Musa salam reached the other side of the sea, he wanted to strike his staff in the sea that's on the water in order to close the pathways so that Pharaoh, Pharaoh will not be able to enter. However, Allah instructed him in the following words. In other words, when Musa salam reached on the other side and all the people, the Bani Israel, had actually come out of the sea and reached onto the shore, Musa salam was, he actually wanted to hit the sea again, the water with his staff, so it can close up the pathways and the water will meet each other again. Because he struck the water with his staff to open the pathways upon the order of Allah. So for it to come back, he will hit it again. He wanted to do that, but Allah says, no, Musa, don't, don't hit it. Leave it as it is. This is mentioned in verse 24 of Surah Dukhan, where Allah said to him, and leave the sea as it is. Yani he was saying to Musa, don't hit the, the water again to cause it to come back with the water, for the water to meet. meet. Don't do that. Leave the sea as it is, quiet and divided. Meaning it was quiet because it became still and calm. And then the water actually separated, separated, thus creating the pathways. So Allah said to Musa salam, leave it like that. Leave it still and calm and leave it divided with the pathways. Verily, they are a host to be drowned. This is the reason. Allah says that these people now, when it remains open, they will enter into the sea. And when Fir'aun and his massive army would be in the ocean, then Allah will cause the water to meet again. And it will close up and all of them will drown in the in the sea. In this verse, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him, Musa alayhi salam, to leave the sea as it was, quiet and divided into pathways. He should not touch it with his staff to close it, because Allah wanted Pharaoh and his troops to enter it so that he can drown them in the sea. This is what he wanted to bring their destruction. And so Pharaoh, being totally unmindful of the destruction that stood ahead of him, entered into the divided parts of the sea with his troops and pursued Musa salam and his followers with might and force, with force and might, hoping to capture and persecute them mercilessly, mercilessly for slipping away from his control. This is what he, so his brain and mind was just filled with vengeance. He was just thinking about catching Musa salam, catching the Israelites and drag them back to Egypt. And deal with them. That was all. And he was blinded to what was taking place. He could not even understand. That if he went into the pathways. That he could be drawn. Because if you are going there. And you are seeing water higher than you on both sides. And you are going into the water with the horses. Then you might not be so lucky. To actually come out safe. But subhanallah. He was actually filled up with that pride and arrogance. Not believing in Allah, not believing in Musa salam, and showing no mercy to the Bani Israel. In fact, being a tyrant and an oppressor over them, subhanAllah. So he could not see that destruction lied ahead of him. He could not see the situation that they were in, but he, he forced the entire army to move into the water. The horses did not even want to go because horses can't swim. So they were looking at the water, although there were pathways, they were looking at the water and they were not going, but they, he forced the entire army to enter with him. And he didn't realize that that will be his end and his, drugs, and his destruction. So, subhanallah, as it said, as it says here, but Allah had already decreed his destruction in the sea. Allah had decreed that already. And so he ordered Musa alayhi salam after he crossed the ocean to leave the sea quiet and calm as it was. Subhanallah. Allah wanted Fir'aun and his troops to enter into the sea. So he said to Musa alayhi salam to leave the sea quiet and calm as it was. Allah also assured Musa alayhi salam and the Bani Israel beforehand, before they even entered into the what? The water. Before they undertook that trip by night. That while crossing the ocean, they will not drown, nor would Pharaoh catch up with them. Allah assured them that, that he will not catch them and they will not drown. It is for this reason he revealed to Musa salam, saying, Do not fear to be overtaken by Pharaoh. That fear should not be in you. And do not fear drowning in the sea. So when this was said beforehand, this was being actually, he was mentally preparing them. You see, because if you do not know of what you will meet, a situation you would meet, when you actually meet it, you will become scared. But if you know beforehand the situation that you are going to meet, and you are given the assurance that nothing will happen to you, then your heart will be calm, and you would not actually be suffering from anxiety, and you, know, uh, you will be frightened and scared. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the time He said to Musa alayhi salam, to take the children of Israel and move them out from Egypt by night. He told Musa salam, from that very time, they did not even start the journey. He told them, you will be pursued. Fir'aun will come after you. Musa salam, told the people. So in other words, while they were moving, at that time when they will see the massive army of Fir'aun, they will not become scared because Allah told them. And Allah also told them that when you would be crossing the, the sea, through the dry pathways, Pharaoh will come after you, even there, but he will not overtake you, subhanAllah. So when they were crossing, they did see Pharaoh coming after them. They would have become scared at that time. But even before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, Pharaoh will not catch up with you. The other thing is that while it was a long journey, I mean, crossing the sea <coughs> from one side of the shore to the opposite side of the shore, it's not like crossing a river or a canal that you can see the other side from on one side and you go over there. No, you can't see that. We are not talking about the shore on the same 
uh, line, you know, we are talking about the opposite, which will be very far. Subhanallah, the land is so far away on that that you can't even see it. And that is what Musa salam, and his people had to cross, the Bani Israel. So going through that, and you are going to the deepest portion of the ocean with the, <laughs> subhanallah, with the water close to you, high as mountains over your head, but just a pathway or pathways were created, then that fear will be there that you will drown at any time should this water just come back and meet each other. But Allah beforehand give them the assurance that that will not happen to you. And just as Allah gives us the assurance and gives the believers the assurance in the what? In the Holy Quran, give the the, the believers, the Muslims, the followers of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all those who truly believe in Allah, he gives them the assurance again and again. Once you believe in me and you worship me and you put your trust in me, no harm will come to you, subhanallah. People may try to cause harm to you. The devils and the shayateen and the satans will try to cause harm to you. The, the jinnats will try to cause harm to you. And harms will try to come your way from many directions. But once you put your trust in Allah, Allah is telling us, once we put our trust in Him, we believe in Him and we pray to Him, no harm will come to us. And He promises that in the Holy Quran. And just as Allah had promised them, really no harm came to them. When Pharaoh saw the sea did not close up, it continued. It continues. The discussion here, when Pharaoh saw that the sea did not close up and the pathways were still open, yani he saw Musa salam, and the Israelites going into and they had reached far ahead and the sea, the water was not closing in and the pathways were still open, what he did? He rushed into the dry paths with his troops and moved towards Musa salam, and his followers. Subhanallah. When they were all inside the ocean, now so, Allah allowed everybody to enter. He kept the, the, the pathways open. When they were all inside the ocean, Allah commanded the sea to close up on them and return to its original shape. Allah ordered the water to come back like what it was before. Let all the paths of the water meet each other and let the pathways disappear. Allah ordered that to happen. And so it happened. And they were all covered up with the waters of the ocean which caused all of them to be destroyed right in front of the eyes of the Ban Israel. And Allah caused this to happen so that the children of Israel, the Bani Israel, will see that the worst enemy, the tyrant, oppressive ruler, that actually took them in bondage for years and years and killed their own male children, you know, and enslaved their women and others, that this very enemy before their eyes, Allah had destroyed him. So this will bring peace at heart, peace in the mind, that this person who was so wicked, who was so cruel to him, right before their eyes, Allah punished him and destroyed him together with his people. Allah mentions about this in verse 78 of Surah Taha and states, Then Fir'aun pursued them with his hosts, meaning his troops and armies, but the seawater completely overwhelmed them and covered them up, subhanallah. It completely overwhelmed them and covered them up. And that was the end of those people, Fir'aun and his troops. Verses 25, 26, and 27 of Surah Dukhan, it states, it continues and it states, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he now, he reflects on what they were and what they had. This is the mafhum of these ayats now. That now that they lived, with the pump and show, and he destroyed them. Now Allah reveals these eyes so that they, the believers, will reflect on what Fir'aun had and what he, 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 you know, he was blessed with. But yet, everything came to an end. So the verses say, How many of gardens and springs do they, Fir'aun's people, left behind? And green crops, fields, etc., and goodly places and palaces and comforts of life wherein they used to take delight. Allah is saying, how many were their gardens? How many gardens they had laden with fruits in every direction? What about the springs that came from the earth, the beautiful, lovely springs they had? And the green crops, flourishing with crops all over the, the, the kingdom. 
and the palaces they had and the lofty stages and the heights of the palaces. What about these places? These things they had. And the comforts of life wherein they used to take delight. The comforts of their life. What they had. Allah says what they had. But then what became of these things? When they disobeyed Allah and they rebelled against Allah and they failed to believe in Him and failed to worship Him and failed to give Him His due. Everything he gave to them, he seized it away and destroyed them and made other people inherit what they had. So as it is mentioned in these verses, Allah mentions the great favors and riches which Pharaoh possessed. However, when he disobeyed Allah and rejected the message of truth, he lost everything. So Allah mentions the river Nile ran right in front of his palace and he had full control over the river Nile. Allah mentions that many were the beautiful gardens of fruits and lovely springs, wells and rivers they possessed. Everything. The most beautiful gardens of fruits, the lovely, lovely springs and wells and rivers that were under their control. They possessed countless fields of varying crops. Countless fields of varying crops. And built for themselves lofty palaces and houses which they lived in. They had everything, the richest, the most wealthiest, subhanallah. They had countless bounties and favors with them, which they delighted in and enjoyed. Night and day they were in pleasure and entertainment and became proud and boastful of their worldly goods. They attributed everything to themselves. They became proud, they became boastful about what they had. Night and day. They actually amused themselves and entertained themselves, you know, in all that which Allah had given to them, but yet they rejected Allah. The one who had been most kind to them, they had forgotten him, unforsaken him, and turned their backs on him. And at the right time, Allah destroyed them and took away everything from them. From them. They continued to enjoy their lives eating what they wanted and wearing what they liked. So while other people were suffering, they enjoyed life, whatever they had and whatever they could have gotten. And the other people were suffering. The other people like the Bani Israel were made into slaves. They lived with wealth, glory and power in the land. They had power. They had glory. They had wealth. They had everything. But all of a sudden, everything was seized from them. Subhanallah. Look how beautiful Allah puts it. Uh, Allah says, look what they were given. But they had to leave everything. All of a sudden, everything was seized from them and they departed from this world with their destination fixed as the hellfire as recorded in Tafsir ibn Kathir. And this is the reality of life, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. This is the reality of life. You know, so Allah reminds us that what type of life here own had the royal palaces, the mighty palaces, the castles, the amount of uh, servants he had. And he had everything, the owner of the land of King Egypt. And Egypt was prosperous at that time. They controlled the, the, the river Nile and the river Nile was the most important river that had to pass through many different lands and cities. And whoever had control over the river Nile, that person had the most power in those days. Because if they stop the water from flowing to other parts by blocking it, then the people living at the different lands and the cities, they would suffer, they would die out of thirst and starvation. The river Nile was the main river that passed through many territories in those days because you did not have like what we have today, pipe bone water and people are digging in for wells and then you have the rainfall and reservoirs are made and catchment, you know, water catchment. You have all these things, but this was the sole means of water for the people. And Fir'aun was the man who was in charge, who had sole authority over the river Nile. So everything he had, you know, he, for him it was like a jannat on the face of the earth. But you know what? He rebelled against Allah and turned against Allah, never worshipped Allah. And Allah taught him a lesson. And Allah did not only teach him a lesson, Allah taught his people a lesson. And Allah made him 
and this incident to be an example and lesson for everyone to come on the face of the earth until the day of judgment. And in that same way, there are people who are just like him, and they will continue to be people in this manner until the day of judgment. There will be people living in every era and in every place and every time who will be granted an abundance of good things and favors and bounties from Allah. They will be given everything, but they will continue to turn against Allah and they will continue to turn away from the worship of Allah. And they will continue like that and they will feel proud about themselves and they will become haughty and boastful and arrogant. But one day, just one day, Allah will teach them a lesson like how he taught Fir'aun a lesson. And he will seize everything from them and he will put them on their knees and there will no, be no coming back from there. And we see matters and we see cases and we see uh, you know, examples of this in our daily lives, you know, every single day. So, as it is mentioned here, that everything they had, they lived in power and glory and might and they lived with wealth. They lived as the, 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 the leaders of everyone, controlling everybody and everything. But what happened? All of a sudden, everything was seized from them. And they departed from this world with their destination fixed as the hellfire. Verse 28 of Surah Dukhan goes further to mention about their wealth and their belongings and the state. Thus it was. Meaning that is how it happened, Allah says, and we made other people inherit them. They worked for it and we made other people inherit them. That is, we made the children of Israel to inherit the kingdom of Egypt. That those very people who had to live as slaves in the kingdom of Pharaoh, who were enslaved, who were beaten night and day, murdered, persecuted, Allah took the land of Egypt and the wealth of Egypt and placed it in their hands. Subhanallah. How Allah turns around those people who are paupers today become kings tomorrow and those who are kings today become paupers tomorrow. In this verse, Allah states that he made the Bani Israel inherit the land and houses in Egypt which were owned by Pharaoh and the Copts, that's the Coptic people. Allah destroyed them on account of their wickedness and granted their lands, valuables and properties to the Bani Israel whom they had enslaved and oppressed. This is what Allah does in this world. You know, when you, you have been given something and that rather than that thing that you have, rather than it make you humble to Allah and submissive to Allah, and rather than becoming a humble and more devoted servant of Allah, you become proud and haughty and mighty and boastful, filled with arrogance. Then Allah seizes that from you and he gives it to other people and he deprives you of everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how he took it from the, the, the Fir'aun and his people and gave it to the Israel, that's the children of Israel, he says, and we made the people who were considered weak, those were the what? The Ibn Israel, the Mustadafina fil Ard. They were weak on the earth to inherit the eastern parts of the land and the western parts thereof, which we have blessed. Allah says that that very land that we had blessed with so many things, Allah gave that land to the Ibn Israel. And the fair word of your Lord was fulfilled for the children of Israel because of their endurance. And we destroyed completely all the great works and buildings which Fir'aun and his people erected. Everything that they had erected, Allah destroyed it. And Allah gave the land authority and power and control and the riches to the Bani Israel. And they were the ones who were actually persecuted. They, they were, those were the people who were enslaved. They lived in bondage. They lived in slavery. But Allah has decreed everything and he fixes a time for everything, subhanAllah. And so a time came when the tables turned, as we said. Fir'an who was on top, he went beneath. And those who were below, Allah put them on top. And this is how this world goes on. You are on top today, you are, your, you are at the bottom tomorrow. And sometimes you are at the bottom today, but then Allah makes you on top tomorrow. That's how the world goes on. But as for those, Allah promises us in the Holy Quran, as for those who believe in him, truly believe in him, and do righteous deeds, and they do righteous works in their lives, and they put their trust in Him. 
He will always take care of them. He will always protect them. He will always bless them with his special blessings. And he will always protect them from every type of harm. That's a, these are some beautiful ayats of the Holy Quran. And the purpose of mentioning verses of this nature, like Musa salam, Prophet Moses on one side and his followers and Firaun on the other side, is to, for us to get the lessons and for us to learn lessons and to teach us lessons. You know, because what happened in the past, whatever happened in the past, it continues to happen and will continue to happen until the day of judgment. Truth will always be a target for falsehood and falsehood will always fight truth. And until the day of judgment, there will always be a fight between truth and falsehood. But the winners will always be those who are on the side of truth and not on the side of falsehood. So whatever we do in our life, make sure that we are always on the side with the truth because only the truthful ones become winners on the face of the earth and in the hereafter. So with this, we'll close today um, and inshallah we'll continue next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.